Yo, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? It's your boy, Purple Slushy, bringing you guys another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how to grind Bloody Monastery in Elvia. So this spot is really good for money. Also, it is really good if you are needing to get the crit pieces for your rings, which is currently what I am working on at the moment. Um, other than that, you also have the ability to drop um, certain items, one being a nail, which I do not have right now, but the nail is actually is going to give you the lunar necklace, which is a really good drop. It's around 300 mil. You also get these drops right here, which are the crimson bells, which are a mechanic that I will go over here in a second. And I waited to start this video until I was able to get a Elvia weapon as well as some bells because it was going to make this video a lot easier. So that way I could explain the mechanic. Um, right off rip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one full rotation and then I'm going to do the bells. Whenever you come to Bloody Monastery, what you want to do is you want to, on the map, the nodes right here, go to the right of the node a little bit where the node manager is and set your mount and your tent down. And then you will start the grind rotation here. So when you have a weapon, what you're going to do is you're going to come this way. You're going to keep on moving. And you want to move pretty fast, but you don't want to move too, too quick. You want to make sure that you're still getting all of your loot. You can skip these four people right here. You're going to kill all these guys right here. You're going to turn around to kill this group. And this spot's really, really chill, honestly, because not a lot of people grind this spot anymore. But it is really good if you still need to get your uh, pieces for your rings for the crit. Um, and it's just also really good XP and also the money isn't bad here. I've been grinding here um, a decent amount and I've been getting pretty good money. Um, the money's not the best, but when you get like a lunar neck, then the money is actually like really, really good for that hour. Um, but you're going to come here, go around the church. You're going to kill this group right here. There's another group in the back as well. We're going to go ahead and kill this group here. Make sure I'm picking up all this loot because I am killing these guys really fast. And then we're just gonna keep moving around in the circle here. And normally what you would do is when you're just normally grinding this rotation, you would come this way, kill those groups I just did, kill this group, come over here, kill this group, kill this group down here, this group right here, right here. And then you would restart the rotation up here. But when you have an Elvia weapon like I do, you do not want to restart the rotation right away because the mobs won't be spawned uh, fast enough for you. So what you want to do is you want to actually extend into the forest. So when you extend here, what that looks like is you're going to come down here. And once you do the half rotation at this bridge, you're going to come across the bridge. And then from here, we're going to extend in the forest. So we're going to kill these guys right here. We're gonna move across over here to the other side. We're gonna move over here. Now I come this way and I go up the hill a little bit. I do this pack and this one. And then I move over here. I kill this pack. Do this one right here. I do this pack down here. There's two of them right here, actually. You might get some people that follow you. Just make sure you kill them. Come across here, kill these packs. And then you're gonna go back up here to these two packs. And then once you kill all that, now you can actually go back and do the other half um, of the main circle by the church. So the main circle, this part up here that wraps around up around here, that's gonna be the main area that you normally do without a weapon. Whenever you get the weapon, you're gonna extend um, to what the forest where I just showed you. I'm gonna go up into the church now and show you the mechanic with the bells. So when you have the bells, you wanna wait. So every time you get a bell, you, 
um, have the actual church bell that's gonna sound. And when the church bell sounds, it's gonna spawn a lot of mobs. Now, when you just have one bell, not that many mobs spawn, but when you have multiple bells, the more bells you have, the more mobs that will spawn at once. So what I like to do is once you get a bell, you have an hour or 58, or I think, yeah, an hour until the actual bell expires. So what I like to do is try to get as many possible in like 30 or 40 minutes. And then when I have a fresh weapon up, I'll go and run all those bells together before they all run out. I never do bells without having the Elvia weapon because it's just not worth it. Um, you don't get as many mobs. So definitely waiting until you get the actual um, weapon to spawn. And then on top of that, having all the bells at once, you're gonna get a lot of mobs that spawn around here. So what I like to do is I like to um, stay in this middle area because they'll keep respawning. And also there's a lot of mobs already in this area that will also respawn off their normal timer. So it's just the best place to just do um, the bells um, just as you're just chilling here. You know, you got the mobs in the church over here, the ones that spawn here behind me, and then over here. And then on top of that, you're gonna have the bell mobs that are gonna be spawning every like 10 seconds or something like that. So it's a really, really good area for XP. Um, it's also a really good area for money. The trash loot here is not bad. I think right now with my AP, I am 292, 293. And I'm averaging around 14 to 15K, depending on how many bells and weapons I get per hour. Um, 13K on like a bad hour where I don't get a lot of weapons and a lot of bells, but on a, an hour where I'm getting a lot of bells and also a decent amount of weapons, I'm getting around 15K trash loot per hour. So it's pretty good trash. I think the trash here is actually worth a decent amount. It is worth 19,000, so not bad. Um, I know a lot of people who have grinded here, honestly, until they were like 700 something gear score. Like some people just love living here. And also the fact that you can get nails that allow you to turn them into um, lunar necklaces is a really, really good uh, drop as well. It's basically like getting a disto dropped. Uh, now they don't drop as often as uh, you know distos drop at Star's End, um, but they still drop pretty often. I think I've grinded here a total of five hours so far, and I've already gotten three um, lunar necks. Now I'm pretty sure that's a lot more than you would normally get, um, but you know I'm not going to complain. That's that's an easy billion silver extra that I got for the five hours that I had spent here the first time, and. Uh, you also really want to be careful when you have more than like more than like four bells up at once because you can definitely die here. Um, like I'm getting hit pretty hard. I don't have HP potions on, but I have 380 DP. Like I'm C10, Duo Labresca, and Duo Fallen God, and I still get hit pretty hard here. So just be careful while you're here. You know, you don't want to die and lose a crystal to, you know, something that's stupid. So. You can make sure that you're just, you know, paying attention, keeping your health up as much as possible. Now, I normally grind on Wusa, but Elvia mobs, um, in my opinion, it, it's better to do it on Sage, just because Sage is like so much AOE. And when you have the weapon, and even when you don't have the weapon, you can just hit so many mobs at once. And I really, really like Awakening, or not Awaken Sage, but Succession Sage for um, Elvia. It just, it just feels like it hits the spot for me, so. So I've been rocking with Sage while I'm grinding here. I do red orcs with, with Agris coin. Um, whenever I normally get Agris without coin, I'll normally go to like Jade and I will grind Jade on my Woosa, but I've just been chilling uh, lately. Like I've gotten to the point with my gear where I kind of just wanna um, focus on getting the things that I need to get to really like get to that next level gear wise so I can just have fun PVPing. So getting all my cups done, which is I'm working on my crit cups right now. And then I'm gonna get my AP cups. Um, and then from there, once I have those cups for my rings and cups for my neck, I'll get the cup for my belt. And then um, after that, hopefully I'll have enough silver saved up to buy a pen black star. Um, I have like 120 billion silver saved up so far. So I need like another like 40 bill to get that main hand pen black star. So I've been working on that. But 
it's a journey um you know this game there's a lot of grinding so you know don't burn yourself out with it it's definitely definitely a good idea to kind of like switch up the zones that you go in pve in um don't always pve in the same spot because honestly that gets boring after a while and you are gonna burn yourself out like if you're always grinding orcs or always grinding lower guy and are only ever grinding hex like swap it up go to new places it'll freshen up the game for you um you'll be able to get you know different drops um and it's just, just a, it's always good to have a good uh change of scenery i also recommend if you're a person that wants to get gains um and you're around like you know 640 gear score or higher get a group every week and do the dungeons like the dungeons is a really good way to be able to uh, make money um, the accessories that you get from the dungeons sometimes you can get really really carried and you can get really really good weapons uh, or I'm sorry really really good accessories uh, from the dungeons. so make sure that you're always doing that um, but yeah the the grind of this game's kind of it's kind of annoying but at the same time like you feel rewarded for it when you do it so right now I'm just I'm just chilling doing the uh, the old cup grind, which I should have done a really long time ago, but I did take a decent uh, break from Black Desert for a while. So now I'm just kind of, you know, kind of trying to catch up to where I should be at. But, you know, we'll be there in no time. Now, um, back to Bloody Monastery. So I believe these bells, when you have... Now, I don't know exactly how the bells work time-wise because whenever I pop one bell, it seems to go away a lot faster than if I pop multiple at once and also more mobs spawn when you pop more than one at once so I don't know if you pop multiple of them if the timer goes up um, because it does seem like when I'm popping more than one the amount of time that the mobs are spawning is a lot longer than if I were to just pop one so definitely recommend popping multiple at once and as you can see the weapon ran out so I'm just trying to uh, you know do my best to actually like combo these mobs now and I'm gonna actually move over here and get these mobs that are spawning up here. And the mobs that actually hit you the most here or hit you for the most amount of damage are gonna be those like uh, wizard type mobs that are shooting the flame balls at you. Um, if you get hit in the back, those definitely hurt. Like anytime I grind here, I don't think I've I can't remember the last time I've been at full health grinding here um, without HP pots. Like I'm always at 40% or lower. Um, and that's gonna be normal just because there's so many mobs that are hitting you all the time. But honestly, you're gonna be fine grinding here. Just make sure that you're watching your health for the most part. I have yet to die here, you know, knock on wood, but I really, really do like this grind spot. And I think that if you are somebody who needs to get the cups, um, I I'd recommend coming here probably around, I'd say like two, probably like 285 Kudum with at least 370 DP. Now, if you're on a class like Wusser or something, you can definitely come here earlier because one, you're fully protected with frontal guards the whole time. And two, the class just hits so hard. So you'll be able to really like maximize your efficiency here. Um, that's what's really good about Wusa is you can grind those hard spots with a lot lower gear than a lot of other classes. But yeah, I'd say around like 285, 370, you should be good here. Um, now if you have health pots, you could probably come a little bit lower um, DP, but just know that like these mobs, they are not forgiving. Like they're constantly gonna be on you. They're constantly, constantly gonna be hitting you hard. So just be careful of that. Like I'm about to die right here, so I need to really be careful here. But yeah, that's about it. Um, you know, Bloody Monastery is just super, super chill, but I think this bell is about to run out, but I'm not gonna make you guys sit there and watch me, you know, grind the rest of this. Just a quick video to kind of give you guys an idea for those of you who haven't grinded your cups yet. And you know, this is something that you want to get into. And also those of you who've never grinded Bloody Monastery before, and you kind of wanted to see what this spot's like and how you grind it. I hope that this was able to kind of give you an insight into the actual bloody monastery grind and i hope you were able to learn something from it that's going to be it for today i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you can 
be a big favor to go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you were able to learn something today. That's going to be it for today. Until next time, it's been your boy Slushy. Peace.